One of the things that I'm finding, and this is in my own personal life, but also while I'm, while I'm working with other people, is that it's really, really hard to not worry about things working out or whether or not they're going to work out. And this uncertainty of building something that you care about, uh, also being cared about by others, it's, it's incredibly overwhelming. It can get you into these really uh, negative cycles where you kind of let the negativity kind of take hold of steering the wheel and leading you down paths that you don't really want or necessarily need to be on. And this is especially prevalent in the technology world. So it's it's easy to find yourself kind of regularly replotting course or going down different paths. You kind of get into this trap of darting from, okay, I'm going here and then I'm going to go there. And then, oh, this thing just changed. So let's go from there back to here. And it, it becomes this situation where you never quite feel like you're at home or like you've got it. You know, you never feel like that, that level of comfort that you, you feel like should be attainable, but it, it just feels like it's really elusive. And it's this, this feeling of just like, there's always something new, always something changing. And it can really just stress you out beyond belief. And I want to talk about some ways in this episode that we can kind of work on this. But most importantly, I want you to realize that this feeling isn't unique to you. So if you're feeling this, it's it's not just you. It's 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 everybody, myself included. Uh, this this world that we operate in, speaking specifically to technology and, and building software and all that, it can be incredibly stressful if you're not careful. And so. What I want you to realize is that it's not just you and that anyone who tries their hand at doing this, so trying to build their idea, runs into this. Uh, but there are some ways that you can find some peace with this stuff and not be so stressed out all the time. So the the main thing that I try and help people understand, and I, when I say people, I also include myself in this, because I it's it's a process. It's not something where like once you get it, it's set in stone. You really have to practice at this. But it's trying to find a singular focus. And so what I mean by that is if you know, like you ever read the news, like if you read websites like Hacker News, or if you like thumb through like a social media feed like a Twitter or something like that, it's it's very likely. And again, speaking from experience with this, you have these little like pings of anxiety. You get into this situation where you're starting to, to like really listen to what people are saying and you realize or you, you get this feeling that things are going in a hundred different directions and you got people saying stuff like, you need to learn this, like you have to go over here, this is the future. And then somebody else is saying something completely different, but they're also saying like, well, if you're not learning this, you're going to be in big trouble. You got to trust me. This is the future. And then you have these, these folks who are like, oh, well, this is future proof. All that other stuff, that's obsolete. That's not going to matter. And they're not wrong. So there, there's two sides or two ways to look at this, which are one, they're not wrong. What they're talking about just by virtue of being new is the future. That's well, yeah, if that didn't exist yesterday, now it exists. So now that is the future. But at the same exact time, it's also false because they're saying things like, well, this is future proof or this other thing is obsolete or something like that. And the reality is like, well, yeah, but your thing is technically obsolete too. Not today and maybe not tomorrow, but eventually all of these things that we see as new, all of these things that we're excited to get you know, some care behind and we should invest all this time and energy into, eventually those things are going to have their own obsolescence come into focus. They're going to be the, the has-been or the thing that we used to do, not the thing that we do now. And the point in understanding all of that and, and kind of realizing and accepting that that's always going to be true no matter what the thing is, is that what really matters when you're building software, when you're trying to uh, build a product, is not necessarily the how, so meaning the, the tools that you use to build the thing and the, the, like the actual process, but more so the what and the why of the what. So what are you doing? Why are you doing it? And the, the kind of thought at play here is this focus on commitment to an idea, not a commitment to a how you implement that idea. And so what I want to encourage you 
if you're you're kind of in this position where you're feeling anxious, and I know this is pretty prevalent right now because especially if we, we zoom into the, the JavaScript community, there's, there's all sorts of different options. There's a lot of different ways to do what you do. Um, and one thing that can really anchor you in all of that chaos is not thinking about all of the stuff, but thinking about the overarching theme of your own work. So what I mean by that is focusing on like, and, and asking yourself these questions. So what problem am I trying to solve? Uh, why am I trying to solve that problem? And really thinking about these things, like making space and making time to go and think about these questions and make sure that you're thinking about it purely for yourself. So internally, have an internal dialogue about this. Don't make it something that you, you share out to the world or that you discuss with others. Just make it for you so that you can try and understand, okay, what? Like, what is the thing that I'm trying to do and why do I want to do that thing? So ignoring all the tools, the technology, all the, the fringe stuff, but really focusing in on that idea. And something that I've personally found happens when you, when you start to focus on that one problem that you're trying to solve, like what is the problem, not the how am I solving it, but what is the problem, is you start to understand that how you actually go about solving your problem doesn't really matter. What really matters is sticking to that one idea, that one problem, solving it, and then over time adapting your solutions to whatever the current how is. So, for example, right now at Clever Beagle, the problem being solved is reducing the complexity and overwhelm of building, shipping, and running a software product. So that's the, that's the problem being solved. At the moment, the how of that being solved is using JavaScript in the browser and on mobile devices. And later, that might change. I expect it to change. It might be, oh, well, we're not using JavaScript anymore. We're using you know, Flaboozle, some new programming language. And we might even be writing that code for a virtual reality environment as opposed to, you know, web browsers and mobile devices. And even though change is guaranteed like it's really guaranteed I've, I've struggled with this for the past few years i was like getting so angry i was like no it can't change it can't change it has to stay this way but then I, I realized that okay well what is the thing that doesn't change and i realized that well it's this commitment to an idea that singular idea so in the context of clever beagle making it easy to build and ship software and when I did that, when I really focused in on, okay, it's not about the how I'm solving it, but literally what is the problem that I'm solving, all of the panic and the anxiety kind of chilled out. I was less focused on like, kind of like keeping up with the Joneses of technology and trying to figure that out, more so like, well, okay, things are going to change, that's inevitable, I can't do anything about that. But what I can do is figure out like, well, what is the best how right now? and then expecting that how to change, and then the next how to change, and then making it less about getting stuck or married to one specific idea or way of doing things, and more so about like, okay, well, this is the problem that I'm solving. How do I solve it today? And then re-asking that question and getting comfortable with re-asking that question as time moves forward. So I'm not just getting stuck on like, nope, this is the one way to do it. Can't do it any other way. That's it. So that's, that's not a good way to do it. Um, what is good is thinking about the how as more of a tool and not your, your core focus, your idea. So when I talk to people about what I do, I, I make a point as best as I can to say, well, I teach people how to build software. I don't say things like, I teach people JavaScript or I teach people... Um, how to build apps with JavaScript. I don't do that intentionally too, because this is kind of training my mind to remind myself that I'm focused on that singular problem, not the how that I'm currently using to solve that problem. And so a good way to make this a bit less abstract is to, to look at your how as a tool. So that's not your primary focus. The how you're doing it right now is not that important. What's important is the the problem that you're trying to solve. So a good example of this that, that has nothing to do with technology is to consider someone who's running a construction company. 
So the, the overarching idea or theme that they've committed to is building houses extremely well. And so if we think about, well, okay, what's involved in that? Well, in the past, they used hammers, nails, and honestly, like blood, sweat, and tears to build a house. Like they, they used their hands and they, they did the work. Today, that's a little bit easier. It's changed. So now they're using nail guns. They've got electric drills, and I'm sure there's a bunch of other modern tools that I'm not aware of that, that make that process a little bit easier. And then if we really think out into the future, it's like, well, a few years from now, they might have a robot on the construction site with them that holds up the wall frames, and maybe it's even doing the nailing themselves. Like, they're just there to supervise the robot. They don't actually even have to do the work anymore. But what's important to realize is that the overarching theme or the goal or the problem being solved is how do we build a house really well? It's not how do we build a house really well always using hammer, a hammer, nails, and our hands. It's no, how do we build a house really well? Now we're going to change our tools. We're going to change our process of doing that, but we're always focused on building the house really well, not on what tools we're using to build the house. And so when you, when you worry about the how, what you get into is this situation where you're wasting energy. And what you have to realize is that in the end, and I've talked about this in, in other episodes of this podcast and stuff I've written over the past few years, and, it's, and again, i got to stress this point, even though I say it, it takes a while to really internalize this, so you have to kind of keep repeating it back to yourself uh, and thinking about this. But it's realizing that in the end, Nobody really cares about how what you're building was built or what it was built with. As long as it works and as long as it exists, it's a thing that they can use. So if we think about the, the analogy of a house, it's like, well, I could care less if you used a robot to put up the walls and, and screw in the, the, the drywall and all of that stuff as long as I can walk into that house and I can take shelter in that house from the elements. That's all I care about as the person who's using that house. Maybe as the, the craftsperson who's like building the thing, yeah, I care about like the little, you know, nuances and details. But in reality, like the people who are going to consume the thing that you create could care less. They really don't care. They want the thing. They don't care about how it was made. And you can apply this to anything. So a house is a little simpler, software is simpler. Think about an iPhone. Do you care about which, uh, what, what do you call those? Things? Like fabrication machine Apple uses to, to, create the iPhone? No, you care about the iPhone. You want the thing. You don't care about how it came to be. And so realizing that, well, we're trying to solve a problem and this just happens to be how we do it now makes things a lot easier to process in the short term because you're not getting caught up in the change cycle. So you're not focused on like, oh, well, this thing just changed up oh, and then this thing just changed up oh, and now this thing just changed and I got to keep up with that. You don't get caught up in that anymore. You focus on like, well, am I making steps towards solving this overarching theme that I've committed myself to? Yes or no. So if you you can say yes, and maybe you're doing it one way today, maybe you did it a different way before, and in the future you'll do it a different way too. But are you staying focused on that one singular idea? So again, contextualizing this to Clever Beagle, am I taking the steps to solve that problem of simplifying the process of building and shipping a piece of software. And what's nice about that is not only does that calm you down in the short term and, and get you to not worry about things changing, but it also makes sure that you're staying focused on the task at hand. So what I mean by that is whenever I start to ask that question and my answer back to myself is no. So I look at the, the decisions I'm making and I can see like, well, no, that has nothing to do with solving this problem. That's just me going on a tangent, or that's me responding to the change in a negative way. But whenever I see that, that immediately tells me, eh, wait a minute, pump the brakes. You need to focus back on the problem. And I've been going through this phase right now. So for the past few months, I've been relatively calm or silent in terms of technology. So I got into this negative cycle where I was like, Oh, oh no, the, the technology I'm using to teach people is changing and I gotta, I gotta worry about this and ah, and I was losing sleep and all this stuff and I said, wait a minute, what is the problem you're trying to solve? All you're trying to do is make it easier for people to do this. The how doesn't matter. And so in the process of all of that, not only did it 
it calmed me down, but it also kind of illuminated back to myself like, okay, things are going to change, but as long as you're solving that problem, it doesn't really matter. It's not that big of a, uh, an issue. And this is the thing that I've learned recently and really started to internalize, which is if you're going to work on something, if you're going to commit to an idea, you have to make room for change. So as you start to adapt to this way of thinking, it's important to understand that eliminating or reducing change shouldn't be the goal. That ultimately is unnecessary friction because you get into this position where your, your time and your energy is invested in worrying about the actual change as opposed to just saying like, well, yeah, duh, of course it's going to change. Things always change. There's literally nothing you or I can do about it. But what you can do is accept it. So you kind of say, okay, I know things are always going to change, but if I commit to an idea, that idea or that problem, as long as you take the time to think about it up front, you say like, okay, what is something that's not going to change? Well, okay, as long as that idea doesn't change, there's your thing that doesn't change. So that gives you a little bit of comfort and peace. But then realize that like, okay, well, I now have to adapt to change. I can't avoid it. I can't get around it. It's impossible to prevent it. So I need to just learn to adapt and stay calm and say like, well, yeah, of course I have to change. That's just the way that things go. That's the nature of the beast. And so kind of reiterating the point here, the way that you adapt is to avoid getting overly committed to the how. And especially in technology, it can be really frustrating to have to change how you're doing things. I can speak personally for this. I've, for the past five or six years, I've done things it, relatively the same way. And now I'm being faced with this challenge of, okay, you have to adapt to change. Otherwise, Clever Beagle goes poof. There's no more barking. Dog's gone. You know, I'm not going to make the joke, but you can imagine what I'm thinking about. And so it's like, instead of letting the kids down and being like, well, Sparky, Sparky's gone. Sparky the Beagle's gone. I don't, I don't know why I call him Sparky, but Sparky the Beagle's gone. Like, you don't want to do that. So it's a, it's a process of adapting. You got to realize that, okay, I'm going to have to change. So it's better to just invest my energy into making the necessary changes and figuring out whatever the path forward is versus, or as opposed to, getting worried and investing energy and effort in that worry. And I, I, I know this you know, firsthand. I have wasted days and weeks and sometimes months worrying about things as opposed to just saying like, well, figure it out. Solve the problem. Sit down, do the work, figure out what the path is, make the decision and just go. And the reality is that, and, and this, is, this is, I see this in a lot of other people, but I also felt it myself, which is, you worry about the decision itself. So it's not just the change you're worried about, you're worried about the decision that you make in response to that change. And what I've realized is that like, well, why? So if things are always gonna change and you're gonna inevitably have to make a decision or kind of fall away and go do something else, you really can't worry about the decision. You have to say, okay, based on the information that I have now, based on the experience that I have now, this seems like the best path. And I can guarantee you without a doubt, sometime down the road, maybe a few months, maybe a few years, I don't know what that's going to be, that decision is going to change and I'm going to have to make another decision. And so there's really no use in spinning your tires and getting really worked up. And you have to realize that like ultimately that's where most of the effort comes in, is in the worrying. So it's, it's kind of like, well, if you think about the work that needs to be done, just the work. A lot of the, the negativity in your head or the, the, the voice in your head that's like, oh, this is going to be such a disaster. This is going to be so hard. Nobody's going to like this. Uh, it's not going to work. You got to realize that most of that fear and worry is around the fear and the worrying, not around the actual work. Because doing the actual work and adapting to the change, it's pretty easy. It's, it might take you a week or two or a few weeks or a few months. But ultimately, like that's not really the hard part. That's not the thing you're stressed out about. The thing you're stressed out about is the fear and the worry about being stressed out about working on the thing. And, and so you got you to gotta back away from that and just realize that, okay, I have to make room for the change. Not just mentally, but also in respect to your workflow. You got to say like, okay, we're going to invest whatever amount of time we think is necessary right now to be as productive as possible with this thing, but understand and not get 
so invested in it that when we have to inevitably change it later, we're not like, I spent six weeks working on this thing and now I have to change it. And then getting into this state of just like, it's almost like grief. Like you've lost a person, but now you're like, oh, it's, I can't believe that all of that time is wasted. It's not wasted. It's, it's adapting. It's changing. It's going with the flow. It's letting things kind of happen and realizing that that's a part of it. And ultimately that requires patience. So you have to get out of your head and say like, okay, I'm committed to this problem. I know that things around it are going to change. So why don't I just choose to be patient and say like, yeah, okay, sometimes it's going to be really smooth. Things are just going to work for a little bit. I'm not going to have to change. And then, you know, the, the inverse of that, I am going to have to change. There are going to be periods where it's a little tumultuous and I'm going to have to make change and adapt. And I'm just going to have to experience that. But accepting that that's a reality that you're going to have to come face to face with it removes a lot of the stress from that situation and that reality and so going through the process of adapting isn't as emotional or dramatic as it might be if you don't anticipate that change or accept that that change is necessary so ultimately as long as you're moving down the same path focused on the same problem adaptation can be effortless. You don't really have to worry about the how. That's just wasted energy. And that wasted energy is better applied ultimately to just solving whatever that singular focus or that singular problem is while ultimately accepting that, yeah, things are going to change. There's nothing I can do about that. So I just have to adapt and accept that like that's part of the game. That's how this stuff works, especially with technology. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. I, I didn't want to belabor the point here because I don't want to create more worry in your head, but this is really important to understand. You have to pick a singular focus. doesn't mean you have to pick a singular how of solving that problem or that focus, but you, you do have to pick a thing that you're going to commit your time and effort to over time. Because if you don't, you're going to constantly be caught in this cycle where you're, you're responding negatively to things changing. So you're, you're going to be saying like, well, okay, now, you know, I, I can't use JavaScript anymore. I got to go learn, you know, artificial intelligence programming using some other language, or I got to go do this, or I got to go do this, or I got to do this. And you're never really giving yourself the space to really think about a problem and commit to a problem, which means that everything that you produce is going to be chaotic because it's not consistent. It's not following a path that people can follow. And when people can't follow it, well, there's no reason to trust you. There's no reason to give attention to you because it's like, well, this dude was focused on this thing yesterday and now they're over here and now they're doing this thing and now they're doing that thing. What the hell is going on? And it, it means that it just creates this unnecessary friction for yourself, but also for people who might be interested in what you're doing if you kind of choose that focus. So I think we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, if you haven't already, again, uh, if you're listening to the audio version of this, uh, we're also doing a video version of this over on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed yet, head over to youtube.com slash clever beagle, hit the subscribe button. And if this topic is helpful, make sure to like it. So it's very helpful for me when you, you kind of give me the, the thumbs up or the thumbs down. I'll, I'll take the, the, the hatred too, if this isn't something that's helpful, but if it is helpful, please, I, I, I would really appreciate it if you take the time to give me the thumbs up and kind of let me know that. I'm going down the right path because I don't want to, you know, be solving my own problem or the, the problem of uh, making this stuff easier for you in the wrong way. I don't want to be using the wrong house. So definitely let me know. Definitely subscribe uh, and give me feedback. So if you have comments on this stuff or you just have questions about it or problems that you've been struggling with, definitely leave comments and let me know. I'm happy to help. I'll, I'll get back to you as quick as I can and, and try and help you calm down and, and solve problems in a peaceful way. So. Uh, that's going to do it for this week, folks. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week.